Well, good evening, all. I wrap Stan, and here we are with your financial market wrap up. And this wrap up is for Monday, and we are at the 22nd of January, 2024. I had personal event over the weekend, just couldn't do the uh, weekend updates. Um, and this is a free service, please understand that. So I do my best for it. Uh, but we're here now. So where are we on these markets? Well, new all-time highs happening in, in stock indices. It's the never-ending market that uh, from October on, once October ended, you went up, you paused at the beginning of January, and now you've come alive again. The laggard, of course, is the Russell 2000. And I laugh when I keep hearing uh, analysts saying, and again, they were added on CNBC, I really like those low caps. That's where you got to be. Wrong place. This is a rally that hasn't spread its wings. It's still an AI rally primarily. So keep your eyes on that. Understand what you're dealing with. Nothing wrong with that, but it hasn't spread its wings completely. And you want to be careful. This is also earnings season. So each day you're going to get some big numbers from big companies. When we take a look at bonds and notes, you're sort of stuck here at the 4.1% area in the 10-year. I read over the weekend a lot. And in reading, I, I read some analysts that I do respect. There will be no rate cuts at all this year. I read others where, yes, March is coming and we're going to get six. Nothing is changing there. I read an equal amount that said three or four. Uh, there was a survey today that came out and how uh, 1,500 of the 6,000, I think it's 6,000 employees at the European Central Bank think this, uh, they don't think Miss Lagarde is the right leader for the bank. Okay, I happen to think she's phenomenal, but I don't work for the bank, all right? I know she's involved in politics. I know that she's not a true, true banker come up the ranks. I think it's just what you need. <laughs> I don't think they get that, okay? You don't need a banker. You need somebody that's on the world stage, that has a presence, that knows how to do that. But I'm an American looking at the European Union. I have no right to, to go one way or the other. They're the ones that have to decide, not me. The Navy today comes out and the, we get a statement that, again, the UK and the United States uh, attacked another dozen or so targets uh, today in Yemen. The Houthis, you like how I'm saying that for those of you there? The Houthis uh, came out and uh, said that they have attacked a naval cargo ship and the Navy command, our Naval command, says that's impossible. We were on with them the whole time they were in the Red Sea. There was no attack at all. We are seeing the pressure coming on on Israel galore. Uh, for to get the hostages released. And we are seeing that Netanyahu absolutely refuses to do anything. Now the remaining hospitals in Gaza are under big time attack. They're in the hospitals. So it'll be more scores of death and so on. And it seems to be the never ending problem. And a number of people are coming to the table out of the Middle East trying to come up with solutions, which would be the ideal solution, find a way to recognize Israel by a number of the states that don't recognize Israel, the right to exist. And maybe, just maybe, that's the way to get a state born in Palestine as well and end it. Do I know? This thing's going on since biblical times. What makes you think I know? Okay, you don't know either. Hey, go talk to your rabbi, your reverend, your reverend, whoever it is you talk to. This has been going on. You ever read the Bible? I have read the Bible, and it's it's interesting. Okay, so very interesting. When we take a look at the E mini S and P, the weekly, and this is the weekly chart. That's why it's E S twenty three. You're at new highs. What can I tell you? It's a closing basis in the market bullish. When you're over the 18 week average or the 18 day, I don't know why I have 18 day there. It should say 18 week, because that's what this chart is. When you're over it, you have a bullish bias. I just have a mistake there. When I look at the E-mini on a daily bar chart, that's friendly. The swing line is bullish. It has been for the past several days. Once the market cleared these highs right here, and that began on Friday, the market just launched itself because now you've caught the shorts in the market again. The market fought a battle. 
and it began fighting at the beginning of the year at the 18-day average of closes, which is red, and the market has stayed basically either side of it. And finally, it came up again on Friday and today, and the market took off. But I'd be very cautious. I'm the guy that tells you only 5% of the time do you stay over Bollinger Bands. You will, if you want to buy the way I teach charting is you never buy a Bollinger Band. I know you're going to tell me I am so wrong, and I agree. I, I probably am. But I won't. I wouldn't have you do it. I think you can come in better prices than that. I realize this particular bull move is a powerful one with that. But even here, if you were dying to buy, you had other opportunities, all right? And the reason is the algorithm says you won't stay over the band more than 5%. I don't know how much when you turn away from the band, you'll fall. Neither do you. You're overbought. You do not have the red line and the blue line, the K and the D lines going sideways over 80. Now, I am in the midst of my new charting course. Today, I was doing slow stochastics, the 70-30 rule, and showing overbought, oversold, crossovers. I'm doing all that right now, and it's way better than I've ever done it before. I'm still keeping separate in my new course, the enhanced Bollinger Band course and how you use slow stochastics in it. And I say that in here, there's a reason. It, it takes it to another level. You gotta get the basics first if you're gonna follow what I do and my interpretation of all this as to where it goes. And I like my interpretation. If you've been following me, I think it uh, serves you well. It doesn't mean it's always right. Nothing is always right. All right, but it stands, I believe, the test of time. And when you look at the market, so you're at that Bollinger Band. So why am I not bullish at Bollinger Bands? Number one, I'm not bearish at them. There's a difference between being bullish and bearish. What I am saying is when you hit them, you're only gonna stay over them 5% of the time. You don't know that you're not gonna get a bigger break. What you do know, since that's the key, if I'm building an algorithm trade or I'm a, in a trade room and I'm teaching people how to trade for their accounts, I'm gonna tell them, you hit those numbers, you wanna take some money off the table. There will be times where you'll go, oh, I shouldn't have got out. Well, if you have an embedded reading, what you do is you can keep portion of it. But when you're not embedded, no. If you miss the trade, guess what? There's always another market. Why are you only married to the S&P? There's all these other indices that are out there you can play with. Example, you had an embedded reading here. Well, when you lose that reading, you get corrections. Now, are they gonna be shallow or deep? I, told, I tell you how to measure that in my courses and you went down to the lower bands. You're gonna sell that band. I know you're gonna tell, hey, if you're buying them in a bull market and you think you're in a correction, why aren't you selling them? You get your head handed to you. Over and over and over, that is what occurs. Over and over and over. Is it every time? Nothing is every time. Is it a high probability that the market will stay out inside the bands, not outside them? Absolutely. What percentage? Do a large scale of numbers 95% of the time. That's what the algorithm is built to do. Go on Investopedia, go on the internet, read about it, you will learn, okay? I teach it in practicality. Learn first the education part as to what the, the algorithm is. And I do modify the, the algorithm a little bit, not on Bollinger Bands, but on momentum with it. Suffice to say, I don't have an uptrend. You, in terms of the swing line, you have a lower low, higher high. I certainly see an uptrend in price. You're at an all-time high. If you go to the weekly charts, they're even a little stronger. But is a trading vehicle not my ideal? And you're going to say, what? I'm going to say, yeah. Now you're getting the swings. Take a look at the Dow. You just went to the Bollinger Band bottom. You went to the top. You had a market that it's been either side of this, and it's basically a sideways market. It's very different. You're trying to break out of the sideways action in the NASDAQ and in the S&P. You don't see that the Bollinger Bands are basically sideways. I do. So again, I, I'm, I'm taking one of those drugs, I guess. I don't know, <laughs> you know, but higher lows, higher highs. And again, there's your resistance in it. So let's go and uh, let me get to where I think we just were. I, I wanna get back over to 
because I was making a point with you. So here's the Dow, and I said, yeah, you're right at that. Either side, you're whipping back and forth. And I know you're good enough, or the guy you know is good enough, where he's telling you, I bought that market right there, and look at what it is. Okay, I sold the market right here, and look at where it's at. I mean, if that's the concept that you're going to buy the Bollinger Band, why aren't you selling it? Not the way to trade is what I'm trying to say. In the uh, Russell, it can't stand that it looks around and it says, everything's going. Why am I not going? So you went to the Bollinger Band. Amazing, isn't it? You hit it. And now you're back up to the 18-day average of closes. Uh, tonight, if you can clear 20.03.30, then you get a pattern that breaks the current downtrend. The market has come up. We are just getting out of oversold area. If I take you back a, a day, you will see that you were oversold. By my definition, if any of the numbers of the slow stochastic are underneath 30, you have an oversold market. Pretty clear that that was the case. And now you're corrected that. This is a, a key number. So tomorrow we're gonna get an idea. Can the chart turn bullish from here? No. You can break the downtrend, the pattern of lower highs and a lower low that hit its target in an oversold market, but you can't start an uptrend because you don't have a higher high and higher low. You can't get that tomorrow unless you have a huge outside day. Ah, giving you the variable. In the 10-year note, very oversold. You ran the Bollinger Band. You kept adding to, as you know, to yield. And now we got a bit of a rally today. One day doesn't mean diddly. You got a higher high, a lower low. You're really not trending. The market is marking time. I can tell you this right now, in front of next week, January 31st. What is the date? What's gonna happen on that day? In unison, the FOMC meeting. Tomorrow morning, just so you know, you get the Bank of Japan meeting. What's Thursday? You got to be on top of this, okay? European Central Bank. What's next week? I think it's next week. Is the Bank of England. You got to know where these banks are going. Why? They're all under pressure to do something with interest rates. In Japan, they want to get away from the easy money policy. And the bank is saying they all have one problem. Too, either too strong or too weak of labor. The Bank of Japan doesn't see inflation enough from labor. It needs to get those union numbers set. What do they come in at and does it lift it? So Mr. Ueda can finally say, if it's true, he thinks inflation is getting baked in. The rest of the world wants to see a weakening in labor markets because they're fighting inflation that's too high and they want the banks to say, hey, come on, we've tightened so much, it's time to loosen up. If you loosen up when you've got a strong labor market, example, the United States, it creates inflation. That is exactly against what Fed Chair Powell is standing with. Did you see Mary Daly? out of uh, San Francisco. Same thing that she just said. I mean, it's pretty basic. If you got good labor, there's no reason. If you got a strong labor market, there's really no reason to step back just yet and begin your rate cuts. You need the market to start tipping and we're getting portions of the market to tip, but we haven't seen it all tip. The service sector's still strong, labor's still strong, industry's been weak. You see that. Now, what's housing gonna be? We have the housing numbers now coming out. Horton's gonna give you some numbers. We're, everything big is happening in front of you right now. We're gonna find a lot out. This is a earnings season. It, it kicks off, it's not one day, it goes for a while now. Higher high, lower low in the five-year note. I don't see a trend trade at all. In the dollar index, you're in a pause. You have a market that's embedded. If it loses it with the red line closing under 79, then I'll make an argument you're going back to at least the 200-day average. But this could just be a correction this past three, four days. As long as it stays embedded, the odds favor it's going to go back up. It's got to lose that to prove that it can go back down. In the euro, it's a flip-flop, but not with an embedded reading. You got oversold, and now the market's trying to give you a small rally. But look at all this resistance at 109.75. 
to 109.05, let's call it 045, the 200 day average along with the 18. So you've got your resistance over the market. You have a bounce in a bearish bias market. Do I think Ms. Lagarde's going to do anything with interest rates Thursday? Absolutely nothing. I think she will say the bank is data dependent. What do I think Fed Chair Powell's going to say? The bank is data dependent. You can say all you want. I guarantee we're back there. By the way, my guarantee is worthless, but I guarantee that that is what they're going to say. Why would they say anything different? They, they've got to hold the line. They, they will modify. Give them the data to modify. The market hasn't done that. When you're in the British pound, tell me you're not just sideways here and you're trying to make a game out of what to do with it. It's too hard. There's no trend at work and you're just drifting sideways. Now, Bitcoin, let me congratulate everybody here that listened to me. When you had the tip on the SEC, somebody hacked it and they said 11 are approved and the market only went up just over 48,400 or so. I said, you got your free look, you got to run run away against the Bollinger Band. The markets told you the story. People didn't believe me. I, I had friends that did, they saw this, and I had a couple people talk to me about it. You're now down from 49,400 to 39,400. All off understanding. You get tips in the market. You're against Bollinger Bands. If that's all it can do, and that's what it is, it meant the market had gone from the 20 and 30,000 range up there looking for that. This is the washout. That doesn't mean there's anything going to be with it. But do you see anything bullish on that chart? I don't. I see an oversold market that's punishing the traders that bought it. They're out $10,000. They don't even know what happened to them. These new people that jumped in those ETFs, they're looking at their value, and they have no concept of a chart often. They're... Again, they're, they're playing the concept. And by the way, if you're a concept trader, you don't look at your value each day. You should be saying to yourself, well, if it was good at 49, it's a hell of a lot better for me at 39. Maybe I should add more. What's your method of trade? That's basically what it comes down to. Now, Brent versus WTI. Hard to believe you were just up here at 575 and coming in, and now you're starting to drop under the 18-day moving average of closes. I, I think this is important. If you can't put a war premium difference between WTI and that, and it's going the other way, is that bullish or bearish? Now you got a real problem. The bullishness comes if you believe economies are going to pick up and interest rates are going to drop. If you're not going to keep interest rates dropping, how do you get these markets that are already tight and restrictive wanting to get more oil, if more oil, big if, if more oil is hitting the market? The big producer in the world is us. We're the bellies. We're overproducing in spite of Biden. And we are giving oil in the world and keeping it going. Libya came back on today, but we have all that Mideast problem. You have the IEA, you have OPEC coming out. They're both saying demand will pick up, but I believe that both of their forecasts are built in a large manner on, an, on the belief that interest rates are gonna fall back. Be careful here. You're at the upper Bollinger Band areas, a lot of resistance, the trends are up not down, the trends are up, you're in a resistance zone, same in the heating oil. This is not bearish. These markets are bullish, but they are getting near overbought and they are coming to a lot of resistance. I see heating oil between a top of 268.94 to the 100 day average, the green line of 273.40. And in that gas, this is probably the spot to cover shorts if you were fortunate enough and read it the way we talked. I said, remember, you gotta think ahead. That cold spell's over. We're going to be in the 40s now in the Midwest. All the snow will be gone in days. It was 35 inches of snow in Chicago right around the lake, uh, Michigan City, which from Chicago, now a ride. Very popular. People go there. That's where they spend their summers. But you just go around the lake. It's a very simple ride. It's expressway driven. I got an inch of snow at my home, 35 inches there. Whoa. That's called the lake effect. 
Here's another effect for you. Why don't you take an advantage of my twice daily updates, and by the way, special updates as I put them out, my morning commentary, all for free, by the way. I, I want you to try it. See what I do. See this specific buy here, sell there. Here's why. The chart action behind it. Fundamentals each day. T two market reports written not to be papers, but to give you the points of the day. What is, should we look at tomorrow? Or what's an event that's happening? Should we be looking at uh, AI? Should we be looking at oil in a certain way? I give you all this and I back it up with chart action. But the most important thing, if I tell you to go into a trade, I walk you through it. There'll be stops. If I have an embedded trade, I explain how that works different, what kind of stop is there because it's different. It's a momentum stop. It's not a price stop. You gotta pay attention to that. And I'm trying to work on a price stop for that, by the way. Then you can get, our software that comes with this works on all your devices. I think you'll find it fascinating. What do you have to lose for free? So give us a call or go to irabstein.com under free offers in the top left or move your cursor up here and take advantage. I'm Ira. I'll catch up with you tomorrow.